Okay, everyone. So let's start with a prayer before we start the session. Okay, Father, we just thank you for the word of truth and thank you for your spirit. And I thank you that the spirit of the living God is inside of us and the word of the living God inside of us. And one more time, the word and the spirit, they become one in one body. And we thank you, Lord, that um, your presence is here and the truth will uh, prevail and no matter what. And I pray for every single person here that hear the word of truth and every, those who will hear online or through YouTube or even uh, Facebook and Father, we just I pray for them that the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ may uh, prevail in their life and may fall the truth may fall in their heart and every truth that is spoken may come to fulfillment to bring fruit for the kingdom of the living God. Thank you, Father. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, as I uh, just want to say that we have changed our time. Uh, from Saturdays at 6 p.m., 7 p.m. to Saturdays at 3 p.m. for the winter time, so it can be easier to commute and um, to go and come back here. So and so that's why we have we are going to have our Facebook live uh, on uh, three o'clock at three o'clock every Saturday. But you will have the YouTube video of it in a couple of weeks, so it will be available in our YouTube channel that this teaching so you can go ahead and watch that whenever you guys are ready to watch. Okay, so <clears throat> you know today I just, um, so yesterday we had, uh, we had a Bible study with a friend of us and it was really amazing. So it was about the, a book that is written and I feel like I should, I should put, I should start talking about that and then we'll pick up from there and, and see that the book that God is writing a book and we become his book. We become his epistle, a letter of God. So we become word that is made flesh. So that's why let's go to the book of Revelation. Okay, so um, let's look at verse one to three. You know, every time I open the book of Revelation, I have to read verse one to three before reading any other verse, because that makes it very clear for us that what are we looking for when we are in the book of Revelation? What is it that we need to focus on and what is it that we need to see or find out in the book of Revelation? So that's why I do it for myself. Every time I want to read the book of Revelation, I first of all, I read the first three verses to make sure that my focus is right and I'm getting the right things out of this book. So look at verse one in the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. So when we are talking about a revelation, that means everything that is revealed, it was uh, hidden before. And that's why it needs to be revealed. When the revelation means it come, it bring it into light so that you can see it. That means before the revelation, this thing was hidden. And that's why you needed to have an enlightenment to see it so that you can understand and see that hidden thing. So the hidden can be, can come into light basically. So when it says revelation of Jesus Christ, that that means Jesus Christ is hidden and needs to be revealed. So Jesus Christ therefore is a mystery that, um, requires an enlightenment so that we can understand who he is and we can know who he is. And he says, this book starts with that, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that means what this book is going to do is to bring into an enlightenment who Jesus Christ is, to give us an understanding and to give us the um, uh, revealing the mystery, Jesus Christ in this book. Okay. And uh, we talked about this before that, you know, when you, uh, if, if, when you read first Peter, 
um, chapter one, when you go to First Peter chapter one, First Peter, uh, he he tells us that the book of Revelation, when when you have the revelation of Jesus Christ, there is a grace that comes to you, and that grace brings you or gives you the salvation that many prophets in the Old Testament that they wrote about. They prophesied of a grace that would come to a generation, to people, because of something that grace would bring the salvation for people. And that's why it is called the good news. So the whole book of the whole Bible, um, I mean, the, uh, so we read that in First Peter that the, that the prophets wrote about, about this, this salvation that will come to a group, to us, to mankind, to humanity, because of the grace that would come to us. And that grace comes at the revelation of Jesus Christ. But the revelation of Jesus Christ brings us to a revelation of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, for this purpose, I am I manifested and I came into the world that he would go on the cross and he would die and he would be, he was raised from the dead. So that's why, um, so the revelation of Jesus Christ is basically the revelation of the death, crucifixion, and the revelation of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that means even though maybe we know that Oh yeah, Jesus Christ died, or yeah, Jesus Christ came to the world. So we are in Christmas time, right? And we are uh, celebrating the birth of Jesus uh, according to the Christmas tradition. Um, but the only purpose that Jesus Christ was born and he came to the world, he came to bring salvation for mankind. That's why the angel called his name Jesus. Maybe we should go read it and then we'll come back to the book of Revelation. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Okay, so uh, look, at, um, look at verse 21 in Matthew chapter 1. Uh, so this is angel who appeared to Joseph in the dream. And he says, and she will bring forth a son. So talking about Mary. She will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, right? So his name is called Jesus by the angel because he will bring a salvation. He will save people from their sin, right? But look at, um, look at uh, verse 22. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So the one who brings a son forth, she is a virgin. Okay? And the son that she's going to bring forth, his name is Jesus, and he will save people from their sin. And um, I just let me just write this down, and because we're going to talk about this a little in the next little while. If you look at uh, verse 18, uh, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows: after his father, after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. The word with child is actually needs to be translated in the right way and it's need to be she was found to have in the belly of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now we see there is a woman. This woman is with child and she that or what she has something in the womb and that is of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And what is going to happen is that when this thing in the womb is born it is called the Son of God. Okay, so it doesn't say that she is, she's having a baby in the womb, but it says that she has something in the womb that is of the Holy Spirit. And when that thing is born, it is called the Son of God, and they give a name to that thing that is born, and that is called Jesus, which means Savior or salvation, which means the one who will save the people from sin. 
So I'm just going to put this here. So this Jesus, this one who was of the Holy Spirit in a virgin, in a womb of a virgin, is now destined to uh, bring a salvation to a group of people. Okay, so I know some of you might say, yeah, we know all these things, but I want to bring something important out of this because it's really important. What I want to say, and I want to bring it, this, this woman, it's the church. And what I'm going to, uh, bring, uh, what we are going to understand that this woman is the story of every believer. When the Holy Spirit will come upon us and something is, starts getting born inside of us. Okay, and, and we, we should start looking at the scripture through like the eyes of the spirit to see what really happened and what can this bring for us. But on the other hand, um, we see that uh, Jesus is born and he said, I'm supposed to, he's supposed to bring a salvation to mankind. And this salvation is a salvation that um, saves people from the sin. Okay, uh, if you go to Luke chapter 2, I think, yeah, verse 34 in Luke chapter 2. This is the story of this guy, Simon, who sees Jesus in the temple and he starts prophesying over Jesus. But he, he says something interesting, verse 34. Then Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign, okay? So this, the child is a sign, okay? So that means the birth of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is only a sign, okay? That doesn't mean it didn't happen. That means, sign means, okay, Look at me, but you will see something bigger. I'm pointing at something greater. So that means, what was the purpose? The purpose was saving people. So the, so the child is a sign that when you see this child, the child is pointing at the salvation that he will bring for you. So he wasn't just born because he was born for himself. He was born to bring salvation for people. So he's a sign, and the sign is pointing to a salvation that comes to whom? To you. All right? So it says, um, he's a sign which will be spoken against. Verse 35, yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Okay, so it says there will be a sword that will pierce through your own soul that the hearts of, that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Look at verse 30, a few verses before that. So he's talking about the salvation. For my eyes have seen your salvation. So he's looking at this baby and he says, my eyes have seen the salvation. Right? Because Jesus means salvation, the one who brings salvation, right? He says, I, so my eyes have seen your salvation, verse 35, 31, which you have prepared before the face of all people. So he has prepared a salvation that this salvation is before the face of all people. And this, by looking at this salvation, he will give you a sign that this sign will He's signing, there's a sign toward something bigger, which is for you, and that thing is called salvation. Okay? So now, look at, but he brings, he brings, he links the salvation to a sword that pierces through your soul, and the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. My eyes have seen a salvation. His name is Salvation. All the prophets wrote about something, a grace that comes to us when Jesus Christ is revealed and this grace will bring a salvation to us. So that means Jesus is a sign to salvation. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is a sign 
to something else, and that thing is called salvation. Okay? But something happens. The thing that happens is that uh, there is a sword that goes through your soul, and the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. Right? So now, so let's go to, um, let's go back to Revelation chapter 1. Oh, you know what? Let's go to 1 Peter. And I just want to show something there to, for, to you guys. 1 Peter 1. Okay. So now uh, look at, um, I just want to show you this verse because I've been, I, I kept quoting it before showing you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, the gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so the book of revelation of Jesus Christ that we, were, we read the first few words there, it brings us a grace. So when you read the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, what's going to happen to you, it brings you and it um, brings to you a grace. Okay, but this grace is for a purpose. Look at verse, um, look at verse 9, chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of what? Soul. Okay, so now keep in mind that uh, that guy, Simon, told Mary that there will be a sword that will pierce through your soul and it will, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. A sword to the soul. And, but right before that, he's talking about the salvation. So this sword that goes through your soul, it will bring you and reveals the thoughts of your heart so that the salvation of soul can happen. Because he's the savior. He has a sword, and this sword pierces through the soul and reveals the hearts of many. Okay? So just keep that in your mind because we, we will get there. But look at verse 9. So receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul, of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied. Prophets prophesied of the what? The grace. Okay? Because they had seen a salvation that would come to mankind, so they prophesied of the grace that would come to people. Because they realized that this salvation is only through the grace. And it, can't, it cannot be attained and achieved by the works of mankind. By the, hand, the making of the things that man makes with his own hand. So it requires a grace. But something happened because they realized that the grace has to come to mankind because of something. Something has to happen. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, a Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. Okay, so the suffering of Christ and the glory that would follow will bring you a grace and that will cause you to have your salvation. Is it clear? Okay. So that means the prophets prophesied about the, the suffering of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. Why? Because the moment the suffering and the resurrection of Jesus is revealed to you, the grace that comes to you so that you can have the salvation. But this salvation is called the salvation of soul. Okay? So the grace, that, the grace comes to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the grace would come to us only when Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, it's only revealed. So you don't need to do anything to try to have the grace of God. All you need is what, what is about Jesus Christ has been hidden from my eyes that I am not receiving the grace. That's why even all the prophets of the old wrote about 
the suffering of Jesus and the glory that would follow, there is a book called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. And this book summarized the whole Bible about Jesus Christ in one book. And it says, if you read this book, you are blessed. Let's go back to Revelation 1. I just want to read verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. Okay? The revelation of Jesus Christ is a word of prophecy. The moment Jesus Christ is revealed to you, it's a prophetic word for you to be fulfilled in you. Okay? I read it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ has been given and blessed is the one who reads and who hears the words of this prophecy. That means what Jesus Christ has done when it is revealed to you, it's only a revelation and it's only a prophecy over your life so that you can have the result of what Jesus Christ died for. And what is that? salvation of soul so when Jesus Christ is revealed then it's a prophecy for you that your soul will be saved <laughs> I think this is good mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. I think you know we don't need to really go up and bring Christ down and we don't need to go down and bring Christ up mm-hmm. but we need to realize that he is in us and he wants to reveal himself to us and by him being revealed in us a grace would come to us to bring us into the salvation so Jesus the revelation of Jesus Christ prophesies the salvation of soul in my life okay so that's why it says blessed. Blessed is he who reads and who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. You keep the prophecy. You keep the words of prophecy that is being revealed to you. You keep the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so now we want to see here that... Um, Let's go to, so now I wrote this here to say, I just, we went through all the scripture here to say, okay, the birth of Jesus Christ was for a purpose and that purpose was to bring salvation to mankind. But in order for mankind to be saved, something had to happen. And that was the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When I know and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is revealed to me, then the grace would come to me so that I can have the salvation of soul. Right? Okay. So, but how did it start with a woman who is a virgin? Right? Mm -hmm. A woman, but it starts with a woman who is a virgin and this virgin has something from the Holy Spirit inside and when she gives birth that son will bring salvation to the woman. What did Simon said? He said that it will be even pierced into your own soul. So this salvation, this salvation of soul, it will be for the woman. Is it clear? This is very important to see. So the woman gave birth to something that will bring salvation to her own. Okay, so last week we talked about the group of people that they follow the Lamb, right? So now here, let's look at, um, we went through some of the verses in chapter 14 last week, but now we want to look at a different aspect and of this Um, different verses in this chapter. Uh, Look at verse 1. Then I looked and behold a lamb standing on a Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their forehead. forehead, Heads. So there is some people are following the lamb. 
right? Last week we just talked a little about it. But let's see who are those. Verse 4. These are the ones who were not defiled with women. It should be woman. It should be one single. They are not. They are the one who has, who were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. virgins. So we see another woman here, right? So they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruit to God and to Lamb. So we see a group of people that they are virgins, mm -hmm. right? So. So who is he talking here about? So let's go to, um, um, so we, I want to go to, let's go, there's a woman who's a virgin, but there's a group of people that they haven't defiled with the woman and they are virgin. So that means we have another woman who is not a virgin. Okay, so let's, um, so now we see here that if you want to just look at this picture here, the Holy Spirit puts something in a womb of a virgin. There is a group of people that they follow the lamb and they are called virgin. So do you think they are women? Mm -hmm. So the people who follow the lamb, they are women. Who are those women that follow the lamb? Who is the woman that follow the lamb but they don't follow another one? church. The church is what? The church is the woman or the church is the wife that needs to submit to the husband. But there is another woman that they are, she's not virgin and she's, she got defiled. So now if you look at this, Holy Spirit puts the Son of God in a womb of a virgin. And what happened is the Son of God will be born and bring salvation to the woman. But if you are not virgin, this cycle will not happen. So this virginity here is really important. So we just want to take a look at this virginity here a little and, and see what does it mean to be virgin, right? What does it mean to be virgin and follow the call, follow the Lamb? But before we do that, let's, let's, look, at, let's look at chapter 12. And uh, we want to see this woman, and this woman is giving birth to something. Um, look at verse 12. Uh, sorry, verse 1 in chapter 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. And being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And being with child, she cried out in labor and pain to give birth. Another sign appeared in heaven. Uh, behold, a gray fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. Um, let's go to verse 5. She bore a male child or son, who was to rule all nation with the rod of iron, and he and her child was cut up to God and his throne. Okay, so she was going to give birth to something, to a son who was going to rule the nation with the rod of iron. So who is this child that she's giving birth? She's giving birth to a son of God because the son of God is the one who is, um, who is going to have the rod of iron. Where do we see that? We see that in Psalm chapter 2, that this is the prophecy for the son of God, that, she, that the son of God is going to have the rod of iron, and that rod will, be, will rule over the nations. I'm going to write this down here. Um, so now... We want, to look, we, want to, we want to look at this two women. So there is a woman who is with child of the Holy Spirit, and she's giving birth to something that this thing will call the Son of God and will bring salvation of soul for the woman. But there is another woman who is not virgin, and, uh, and she is defiled. Okay? And so that's why that, that cycle won't happen 
in that woman. That's why something needs to happen. So now let's look at, uh, so I want to quickly show you about this defilement. So to understand this, where does this defilement happen? Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. So I wanna, we want to see that this defilement that happens to, the, to a woman, it happens to some, something, you know. It's something that gets defiled. Look at verse 7. However, there is not in every one that knowledge for some with consciousness of idol until now eat as a thing offered to an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled. Okay, so you'll find the same word that defile is the woman is defiled. So here it says, it says that the conscience of someone can be defiled with something. Okay, so we already talked about this a lot of time that in the book of Hebrews, it says the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed the conscience of people from sin, from dead works, from evil, and from sin. So the conscience of people is where you can be cleansed white like a robe or your conscience is a place that is defiled. But this defilement happens through another person, another woman who is not a virgin and she will cause people to commit sexual immorality. And what happened is this woman will cause people that not, they don't be virgin. So what happened is this thing, this cycle here won't happen in them. So the woman will not be saved. Okay. So now, so we, so, but we, 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 we read that this is, this has happened to the conscience of people. But it says those people that are virgin, they are the one who follow the lamb. The lamb. And that means the blood of the lamb is constantly keeping them virgin. How? Because it's keeping their conscience cleanse. So nothing else will be conceived in them except that of the Holy Spirit in the womb of their heart. So when you start following the lamb, the blood of the lamb washes your conscience. And what happened is something happens. The spirit of God comes to you. What did Mary say? Mary said, I am a virgin. And, she, and how can this be? The power of the most high will overshadow you. And the holy thing, something will be conceived in you. So the word and the spirit. So when you follow the lamb here, so that lamb starts keeping your conscience Cleanse from what? From sin. So this woman is not virgin. That means the conscience is not cleansed from sin. That means the sin resides in the conscience and it's like a conception. It's like a seed that is there and it gives birth to death. But when you follow the lamb, the blood of Jesus will wash your conscience and something else will start um, this, another seed will be in your heart and that seed will put in the womb of your heart which is of the Holy Spirit and you will bring forth the Son of God who will even who will save your own soul so that means the story of the church is to come into a place to realize that okay what happened to Jesus Christ, it was only a sign that should happen to me. When, when the Holy Spirit came upon a woman that is virgin, that is talking about the bride, the woman, for the, the woman of the church, that she needs to give birth to something, and that thing has to bring salvation for herself. And the only way to do it is to be able to submit to the husband. How? By following the husband, the lamb. And what would the husband do? The husband will wash you and cleanse you and put his own seed inside of you. And you will bring forth something that will bring salvation to yourself. So let's uh, just want to quickly show you something here. Let's go to... Um, let's go to 1st Timothy chapter 2 but 
I want to read this, and then after that, I want to say that the first woman who gave birth to a son was Jesus. So today we want to know that Jesus is a woman too. He was a woman, and he gave birth to a son. Right? So, so follow me, because I want to take you through some scripture and see that we follow the Lamb. And every step that he goes, then we go through that step because his life story is only a sign to another people, to us, so that we can follow. And as he was raised from the dead, so we can have salvation. Luke at uh, verse, um, look at verse 11 in uh, First Timothy chapter 2. Um... Verse 11, let a woman learn in silence with all submission. Okay, so he's talking about a woman. Didn't we read in Ephesians chapter 5 that the woman has to submit? Submit to who? To the husband. And who is the husband? The Christ. And who is the woman? The church. So here it says, okay, let's let the woman, the church, submit to the husband. <clears throat> with all submission, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Okay, so there's a woman that can't have authority over a man. Which woman? The church. The church cannot have authority over a man who is her husband. Because the woman shouldn't teach the husband. If that can happen, then we are back to garden when the woman taught the husband to eat from the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But here it says, okay, your husband is Christ, Jesus, and you can't teach him. He's the one who has to teach you. Because something has to happen. Because the church has to be saved. Um, okay. Let's go, um, let's go over 13. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. Okay, so all of a sudden he brings the story of Adam and Eve into the picture. Every time that we see that about woman and husband, it comes to Adam and Eve and the church and the Christ. Okay, so Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. So it says, okay, it was the woman in the beginning who was deceived, and then he went to, his hu to her husband and, and taught her husband to eat of the same thing that she just ate. That's why I don't let the woman to teach the man. But which man? You are the woman of the Christ, the, church, the, the, the head. You are the body of the Christ. So you are the woman of the husband. So you won't be able to teach your head, the Christ. He has to, able, he has to be able to teach you something. And when you submit to him, something happens. The conception happens. And you will give birth to something. Look at verse 15. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing. Okay, look here. The woman will be saved in childbearing. When the woman submits to the husband, so she becomes, of, she's going to have something of the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to something. That thing will be, bring a salvation to herself. It says the woman is not saved yet. Jesus Christ is the savior of the body. The body of Jesus Christ is the church. And the church is the woman that needs to be saved. So she's not, she can't just teach the head about what she knows. She has to submit to the head so that the head can teach her something so that she can bring forth something. She can give birth to, the, to a child, the son of God, and that will bring salvation to her. She will nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Okay? So let's go back to the book of Revelation. So, um... Let's go to 
Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 18, that she, Jesus is writing to one of these churches. And we want to see the woman that will cause people not to be virgin. Uh, and to the angel of the church of Tyre, Tyre, Tyra, right? These things says the son of God. Okay, hold on. Who? Where did the son of God come out? He came out of a virgin. And there is a woman who doesn't let people, the, the women of God, <laughs> the church to be virgin so that they can give birth to the son of God. So the fruit of a virgin woman is a standing in front of a woman that doesn't let the church to be virgin. Right? I repeat it again. The fruit of a virgin woman that wants the church to be virgin so that he can be the fruit of the church is a standing in front of another woman who doesn't let the church to be virgin. So there is a woman that doesn't let the church to be virgin so the Son of God can be born. So the Son of God is standing and talking to this woman, Jezebel. These things says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. Okay, so he just introduced himself. Eyes like a flame of fire and feet like fine brass. I know your works. Love, service, faith, and your patience. And, and, and as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel. So Jesus is writing to a church. So you're allowing the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce, or it's the word is like go astray, my servants to commit sexual immorality. So that means when, when they committed sexual immorality, they are not virgin anymore. And eating things sacrificed to the idols. Okay, so now, so she's, Jesus is writing to this church and says, okay, I am the son of God, first of all. I am the fruit of a womb that is virgin. And you are allowing a woman to cause my people, the other women, to commit sexual immorality. So that means they are not virgin anymore so that that holy thing, the Son of God, will be born out of them. Because they are, not, they are now following another, another lamb. <laughs> So, but he says, what does he say? He says, you teach. She was a prof, she, she, she says that she's a prophetess and she teaches people to commit sexual immorality. So that means what brings a person, what brings the church into virginity, it's a teaching of a true prophet, not a teaching of a false prophet. Blessed is he, the revelation of Jesus Christ is the true prophecy. So the teaching that will bring the church to realize who Jesus Christ is, it's what brings the church into virginity or keeps the church virgin. Okay? So now we, <clears throat> so now we talked about, so now Jesus comes says, as the son of God, the fruit of a virgin woman. But what happened was this woman gave birth with pain in Revelation chapter 12 to a son of God. Right? Okay. So let's go. Let's look at verse 22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Cast who? Not the church. The woman, the Jezebel. I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. 
Okay, so now verse 23, I will kill, kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the mind and what? Heart. What this Simon said, it says this, this son will be bring a sword into a soul of people and the, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. What is he doing? He's the one he's bring, he's searching the hearts of people and if there is a conception that is not of God, she will kill that conception. If there is anything that is conceived to you that is not from the teaching of the Lamb, but it is from the woman Jezebel, he will burn that by the, by the fire that is in his own eyes. Right? Look at that. Look at verse 27. Look at verse 26. He who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over nations. Didn't we read that the woman gave birth to a son who was going to rule the nations? Yeah. Right? So he's writing to this church and said, if you overcome this woman, you will be the woman who will have power over what? The nations. Why? Because the Holy, the Son of God will be born in you. Look at verse 27. He shall rule them with the rod of iron. Hello? It says he, but the church is a she. <laughs> He's writing to the church and says, if you overcome, he shall rule them with the rod of iron. Who's he? If you overcome, because you're the woman, if you overcome the son who is born in you, he will, grow, he will reign. He will rule them with the rod of iron. Who is the son? Chapter 12, the woman gave birth to a son who was going to rule them with the rod of iron. It doesn't say you. It doesn't say she. He. So the overcoming of this church really is to give birth to the son of God. How do you do that? By following the Lamb, by submitting to your husband, but not defiling your conscience with the wrong teachings. But let the blood of Jesus Christ to wash your conscience. So he shall, verse 27, he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and they shall be dashed to pieces like a potter's vessels. They, the nations. Okay, so, so here. It says, look at, this is an important verse because I wanted to go to Genesis after I read this. As I also have received from my father. Okay. <laughs> so he writes to the church and he says, church, if you overcome, he shall rule with the rod of iron. That means church, if you overcome, you will give birth to the Son of God and He's the one that will rule with the rod of iron and bring salvation to you. As I received from my Father. That means I once was a woman who overcame. I was virgin and I overcame. And the Son of God is born and that He's giving birth. He's, he's the one who has the rod of iron. It says, as, every church that you read in the book of Revelation, Jesus tells them, as I overcome. The same way I overcome, if you overcome, you will get this, because I also overcame and I got that. This church is supposed to give birth to the Son of God by being virgin. Jesus says, if you overcome, this is what's going to happen, as I overcame. So what he's saying is, I was once the woman too. And I was once who was, didn't defile myself with the woman. But I was virgin and I gave birth to the Son of God. Okay, so let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Because it said blood keeps your conscience clean. So that's why you are virgin. We read that, that they defile their conscience. That's why they were not virgins. So we saw virginity has something to do with the blood of Jesus. Right? Okay. So now, 
let's look at uh, chapter 5, verse 27. So he's talking about the church. Look at verse 25, actually. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church. So he's not talking about husband and wife. He's talking about Christ and the church. Okay? Why? Because end of chapter 5 tells us, I'm not writing these things because I'm talking about Christ and the church. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So there is a blood to keep her virgin, not defiled, and there is a water, and there is a water to do what? To sanctify and cleanse the what? The church. So we see the blood, we see the water. So the church is the work of the blood of Jesus and the water, which is the word of God. So the church is being built up to this glorious church or to the bride by these two. So God is building her up making her to be a woman that is sufficient enough to marry the Son of God, to marry Jesus, to marry the Christ. How does he do it? By the blood and the water. So now, look at verse 30. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. church. So the man, for this reason, verse 31, is a quote from Genesis. Let's go to Genesis and read that there. Look at verse 23. And Adam said, this is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, right? Because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So this is talking about Adam and this, the woman. But Paul writes this and says this is about the church and the Christ. So, but let's see how... This, the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh was born. The church. Let's see how did that happen. Look at verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made it. He built it up into a woman. And he brought her to the man. So the Lord God caused Adam to fall on the, to sleep. What, what does this, it says this is the Christ and the church. In order for the church to be born, that the man had to sleep, Jesus, on the cross. Death. And out of his sight, the Lord God took something out and built that one up into a woman and brought that to the man and they became one flesh. But what happened was Jesus, when Jesus is on the cross, what did come out of his sight? So God is the blood and water came out of the sight of Adam on the cross. Jesus, as the last Adam, he's on the cross and he fell asleep and the woman came out of him. And that woman is made of the blood and the water. And that, that woman is called the church. So he was basically the woman who is on the cross and he's giving birth to another woman. <laughs> Why? Because what happened is he's giving birth to something that is first of all is going to be his own body. 
But on the other hand, on the cross, he's with pain and agony and he's giving birth to a son at the same time. Why? Because this son is going to save the woman. Which woman? The woman that he just gave birth to, the church. <laughs> so now, look here. So the woman who gave birth with, to the Son of God with pain and agony is Jesus on the cross. And he gave birth to Son of God. And this Son of God is now supposed to be born out of many women. And once that happens, that means the church is born and the church is ready, is washed by the blood and water. So, and the church is glorious and ready for what? To marry the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Revelation. Um, you know, let's look at chapter 2 first and then we'll go back to chapter 1. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2. And... Um, on verse 19, what did Jesus tell this church, the woman? He says, I know your patience. Look at verse, verse 19. I know your works, your love, your service, your faith, your patience. And then he goes on and he talks about the tribulation. Look at verse 22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into a great tribulation unless they repent. Right? So Jesus is talking about a tribulation, which is related to what? To the woman. Which woman? The woman that is here. Right? So now I want to look at, let's go to chapter 7, verse 14. So we want to see this tribulation here. Because we are talking about the woman and we are talking about the giving birth to a son. And then all of a sudden, tribulation comes to the picture. Look at verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 14. Uh, verse 13. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? So he's seeing some people in white robes. In chapter 17, we saw them white robes too. Chapter 14. Okay? So look at verse 14. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They came out of the great tribulation and they washed their robes with the blood of the Lamb. So that means they didn't defile themselves. The blood of the Lamb. What did we say? We say that the blood of the Lamb washes your conscience. And if your conscience is not cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, then your conscience is defiled. So they are the one whose robes are clean with the blood of the Lamb. The book of Hebrews tells us only the conscience are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Okay? So now, so they came out of the great tribulation and their robes, the robe is white. Okay, so now, we see, do you see the picture of the woman here? The blood of the lamb cleanses what? The conscience. That's why they are virgin. But it says they came out of a tribulation. If you just look at this, then we can just know what is the tribulation that the woman is coming out of. Let's go to John chapter 16, and we'll see the woman there too. Look at uh, John chapter 16, verse 19. <clears throat> and Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while you will not see me, and again a little while you will see me. So this is important. A little while you will not see me, and a little while you will see me. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. So you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. Okay? A woman, when she is in labor, 
has sorrow. Okay, so who's the woman? You. It says you will be sorrowful. A woman who is in labor is in sorrow. Right? So you will be sorrowful. It's like a woman who is in labor. A woman who is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come. Uh, but as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remember the anguish or tribulation. It says, the woman who is virgin and have something in the Holy Spirit before giving birth to something, it's in sorrow. So he says, you will be sorrowful. It's going to be like a woman who the time or hour of birth has come. Giving birth has arrived, right? So now look at verse 21. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as, as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the tribulation for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you. Okay, look here. A woman is in sor sorrowful, but as soon as she gives birth, she doesn't remember the tribulation. You are sorrowful because you don't see me, but in a little while you will see me. You are sorrowful because you don't see me, but in a little while you will see me and your sorrow will be turned to joy. So a woman who's giving birth is in sorrow, but as soon as the baby is born, she's joyful. I am going away from you, but as soon as I come back, then you are joyful. <laughs> so you are the woman who is pregnant with me. And as soon as you finish the tribulation and give birth to me and you will see me again, your sorrow will be turned to joy. So, so, so the time of giving birth to the Son of God is called the time of tribulation. The time for the church to hold on to the doctrine of Jesus Christ, to hold on to the blood and the water, until she gives birth to the Son of God. It's called the time of tribulation. Because you're giving birth to the Son of God. But as soon as he comes, as soon as he's born, you will see him and you are happy. You are joyful. Okay, so now, the time of giving birth is the tribulation because it's the time you didn't defile yourself with the woman. is the time that you are following the Lamb and you are virgin. You are carrying something inside of you, the Son of God, and you are giving birth to this Son with pain. And that is called the time of temptation. What kind of temptation? The temptation that you will not, the temptation that comes to you to make you defiled. By what? By Jezebel. So it means the time that you are holding to the doctrine of Jesus is the time that you are holding the, that holy thing in your womb. And you will continue to hold that word of prophecy, the revelation of Jesus Christ inside of you, and you will holding it until it is given birth. Until that revelation, which was a word of prophecy, it becomes fulfillment into your life. Because what did we say? We say the revelation of Jesus Christ is only a prophecy. That means as a woman, the moment you have the, you hear the word of the prophecy, it is conceived in you. And you're pregnant with what? With the word of prophecy. You're pregnant with the word of God. You're pregnant with the son of God. But it hasn't been born yet. You just heard it. It has fallen into your heart. And what happened is if you continue holding it and believing it like what Mary did, 
if you continue holding to the word of prophecy, the revelation of Jesus Christ that you just heard, you will give birth and that means that word will come into fulfillment into your life. The time from the time that you hear a word until the time that it becomes into fulfillment, it's a time of tribulation for you to understand that, to, uh, to, to push through because you are giving birth to something you just heard. So what he is saying then, he says, okay, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Because you heard the word of prophecy and all you need to do is you need to follow him until that word of prophecy become in fulfillment. I think, I think this is really encouraging. <laughs> I think this is really good that we may know that, okay, so the moment you hear the revelation of Jesus Christ, this is not the end of the story. This is just the beginning of the story because that word that you just heard has to come into fulfillment. And the fulfillment of that word, it's like giving birth into something. And when you give birth from the time here and until here, maybe you feel the pain of um, giving birth but you know that you are holding something, you're holding something inside of you. And that thing is the word of God. What do you need to do? You need to keep hold, hold it. Hold the word of God, hold what you have heard and let what you have heard, it becomes into fulfillment. And even if it's going through that tribulation, even it's like a pain of giving birth, but the moment it is fulfilled, you won't even remember that. Why? Because, because a, it says a human being has been born to the world. Because what you are giving birth to, it was, it was having nine months of pregnancy. That's right. What you are giving birth to, it's worth keeping the word of God in, in your heart. And let the word of God to Keep growing inside of you, so don't give birth to an immature son. When you hear the word of God, don't try to push and give birth to something that is not yet mature to be born. So you hold it with a heart that is believing, a heart that believes. Why? Because we are that woman that God and the virgin, that God has put something inside of us. Maybe it's not yet born out of us, but that's why it is called the time of tribulation, the time that you are going to give birth. So those who are following the lamb, they are the one who have come out of tribulation. That means they have given birth to something. Right? So now, so, I didn't, I didn't even get to say what I wanted to say today, but <laughs> I wanted to talk about the book and writing a book, but that Jesus is writing a book to the churches. And, but I just felt somehow that I have to go to this direction and bring it one more time into the picture here that we are the souls that needs to be saved by the spirit. We are the body of Christ, the soul, but the Christ is the spirit, the husband. The husband has to save the soul, the body of Christ. The soul is the woman who wasn't submitting to the husband in the beginning, but the, the moment the soul submits to the spirit, because the word is already in there, and the spirit comes, and the word and the spirit become one, and brings a conception of something that will bring the Son of God out which rule the nations with the rod of iron, which will bring salvation to your own soul. So what do we need to do as a soul, as a living soul, we need to hold on to a word that we heard, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And when we submit to our head, the spirit, the word and the spirit will bring out something which is really important, which is really worth experiencing the time of temptation or tribulation. So if you have heard the prophecy or if you have heard the word of God, if you have had the revelation of Jesus Christ, 
if you had heard the word of prophecy or a truth that you have already heard. So don't try to give birth to an immature seed. Let that word of God to start nourishing inside of you. That is called the time of tribulation. The time that you have not seen your baby yet, but you know that you have something inside of you, but it, it is not yet fulfilled. And that's the tribulation. That's the pain that you have heard the good thing, you have heard the truth about Jesus Christ, you have heard a promise, you know what you have in him and what you are going to have, but you haven't had it, you don't have it yet. And that's the hard time, that's the time that actually you need to push, that's the time that you need to endure the temptation, endure the tribulation. This is the hard time. You've got something inside of you, you know you've got it, but you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> How many of us have heard all this stuff, the words of prophecy and the revelation, and how many of us have heard these amazing promises? But it's not there yet. We don't have it yet. The reason is it's inside of us. We shouldn't abort the baby <laughs> by thinking, oh, we are not pregnant and do what we are not supposed to do. But we need to understand that we have the word inside of us. It is inside of us. And what do we need to do? As Jesus wrote to this church and said, okay, you know, you gotta, you gotta don't think the word that was inside of you, it wasn't truth. <laughs> Hold on to it. And, and, and this time of tribulation, it's only for a short time. For, for, those, for the women who have given birth actually in a natural sense, you know that it's only a short time. But once your baby is born, it's forever. That joy of having a baby, this is what is happening with the Word of God inside of us. And I just want to pray for all of us that as a woman, that we should submit to our husband, the Christ. And we will be saved through the childbearing. But this childbearing will, might, might be with pain and agony <laughs> because we don't have what we have yet. And Father, I just pray for all of us here, Lord. And I pray that the word of truth that has fallen into our heart will bring all of us into a place of giving birth to the Son of God. And so that every seed that is planted in our heart, that is conceived in our womb, in our heart, the Word of God will come into maturity and will give birth and, and that the Son of God will be born out of us. And He will, he will um, rule nations for us and he will bring our enemies under our feet so as a church we don't need to fight the enemies the woman doesn't need to go to the battle the woman needs to give birth to a son who goes to a battle and father i just pray for all of us that the word of truth that has we have all of us we have heard amazing words and we have had revelations of jesus christ before and i pray uh, that every seed that is conceived inside of us that will bring uh, that will come into um, giving birth and i thank you lord for encouraging every one of us here and i thank you for for um, telling us that even though maybe we don't see you yet because you are inside of us but we will see you in a short time because you will come out of us and you will be born in, uh, in us and you will destroy our enemies and you will bring to an end the anguish of the soul and the tribulation because we see you. So our sorrow will turn into joy. And I thank you, Lord, that this time of tribulation is the time that we will decide that we will come out of the tribulation to giving birth to the Son of God and we follow the Lamb. We thank you, Lord, for the word of truth and I pray that um, for the encouragement of the heart that we realize that it's time to, um, to see the Son of God because he, he's now kind of 
he's going to come out of us. And I thank you, Father, that you will bring that time short and you will make the time of delivery fast and short. You are not a God who bring to delivery time and you don't let the delivery happen. You are the, if you have planted the seed of the word of God inside of us, you will bring us to a time, to a delivery time to give birth to the Son of God inside of us. And I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.